Well, at a basic level, again, this uh, this very much started as a, you know meant to be a reappraisal of, of Russo-German relations, uh, and then, you know as I as I read more both primary and secondary sources, I began to realize that uh, you know that's not the, the, what's really interesting about this uh, this conference, uh, the Russo-German dynamic. It's fairly straightforward. Obviously, it is important. It's still there in the book, uh, but uh, I, I, I thought that the role of uh, in particular of Habsburg policy and domestic developments in the uh, the Habsburg Empire, at least as important, uh, if not more. And again, the Ukrainian factor here, also also very important. Um, And one thing that I try to highlight uh, is Ukrainian agency, because if you read, for example, the minutes of the conferences on policy carried out by uh, by Austria-Hungary and by Germany in December of, of 1917, they discuss all sorts of territorial questions, like the Polish question, uh, the situation in the Balkans, uh, the situation in the Baltic. The, the word Ukraine does not appear once, uh, and I've read the full minutes uh, in German. Uh, so it, it really is sort of the, uh, the the agency of the Ukrainian government of the Central Rada, uh, which is key here because it's the Ukrainians who decide to send in their delegation uh, and then decide after they realize they can't steer this middle course between Russia and the Central Powers, which they originally hoped they would be able to, to steer them, they orientate themselves towards signing a peace treaty and getting uh, official erect state recognition by the central powers, uh, which follows automatically when the, the treaty is signed and a few other neutral countries like Switzerland, for example, also recognize the Ukrainian People's Republic as an independent state. So this is very important. Um, you know, de facto state recognition is one thing, but de jure state recognition uh, is just uh, as important uh, in that um, Ukrainian statehood in this case, uh, is legally um, defined uh, within international law. Uh, so I think uh, these were some, some things that I discovered, uh, which were, were quite interesting. And again, um, it's, I think it's always the case when you start with a certain um, certain set of ideas, when you start working on a project, uh, and then the more you read about it, uh, the more you realize that, you know, that there's more to that that means the eye. Uh, and so um, I think the, the way the book evolved uh, highlights that.